So, if you've ever wanted to play an isometric version of Red Dead Redemption 2 with immersive sim elements and a paranormal theme, well, I've got good news for you because Weird West has just been released and it might be exactly what you're looking for. Impressive. Very nice. Developed by Wolfeye Studios, a group made up of industry veterans who formerly worked for Arkane Studios on titles like Dishonored and Prey, and it should be pretty apparent where that influence comes in once you start playing Weird West. I mean, just from the art style on face value, but then through to the depth and decisions that the player can make when it comes to the story, not to mention the vast approaches to the gameplay. Now, to be honest, I've had a bit of a love-hate relationship with this thing, especially when it came to the controls and the camera perspective. I know that making an isometric shooter is probably a whole lot easier than a first-person one, but I was kind of struggling with that aspect for a while here. Once it started to click though, it really turned out to be one of the better games I've played recently. And just in terms of the base content alone, the whole thing is just so immensely unique. You see, the journey in Weird West isn't just played through the eyes of a single character, in fact it's played through five in total. And then what's kind of interesting there too is that some of these characters work for factions that are practically at war with one another. You've got a bounty hunter who's trying to find and rescue her kidnapped husband, going up against a violent group of bandits and outlaws. You've got a pig man trying to uncover the reasons behind his transformation and who he was before this affliction. It's a pig man! There's a Native American protector slash hunter seeking out a mythical mine full of cursed gold. A goddamn werewolf trying to protect his kind from being wiped out by a coven of bald-headed witches. And then finally, a chapter playing as one of those witches, exploring the reasons why all of these characters are so tightly interwoven in the first place. They all focus on different themes too, like justice, revenge, greed, and corruption. And a lot of the time, things aren't exactly all that simple, with the player having to make some tough decisions as to how they're going to side. Pistol's grip matches your palm exactly. All blue. Been a while. But honestly, I feel like saying too much about the story here is kind of a dick move. Not that I think it's really all that possible to begin with, just considering how much of it there actually is. And I do want to say off the back of that, that I really feel like there's going to be a whole bunch of stuff here that I'm barely going to make a dent in. The developer said this is going to be a 20 to 25 hour long game for a first time playthrough. And yeah, man, they're really not bullshitting because this thing just keeps going and going. And then when you finally finish one character arc, you forget that you've still got three or four to go. And that's if you're still sticking to the main path. I mean, there's still a living, breathing world going on out there in the background. I do feel like there is a bit of repetition with the side content though. So aside from just exploring all of these various locations speckled across the map, you can also go after bounties for cash. Only these really just seem to be randomly generated NPCs that are found at like a preset location. You just go to that area, find the outlaw and then either kill them or haul their ass back to the sheriff for a bonus. A lot of the time too, after you capture someone, they're likely to come back later on with a diehard vendetta against you, which means you're just gonna have to kill them anyway. Either way though, someone's gonna die at some point, so it's a win-win. But there's no real end to doing any of these. I mean, you get a bit of cash for it, but it doesn't affect anything outside of increasing your reputation. I do think it's kind of ironic though, caring about the way that a virtual world perceives you, you know, when you're playing as a machete and cleaver-wielding pigman. EMOTIONAL DAMAGE! I just did a few of these early on so I could afford to buy a horse because getting across that map screen is light years faster when you're on a horseback as opposed to walking around on foot like an absolute sucker. Oh, come on! When you're moving across that map it's also common to be attacked by wild animals or bandits or undead abominations and a mighty steed can give the option to just avoid some of these. Despite the map being covered in various locations like mines, haciendas, game stops, and ghost towns, it really just feels like the same couple of template areas copy-pasted over and over. I mean, they might harbor unique enemies and have some cool loot tucked away somewhere, but it's usually similar if not just the exact same layouts to the same locations you've already explored like half a dozen times. Then there's all the numerous stashes throughout the Weird West too. Items that are buried underground that you'll need both a shovel and a map to find. But again, they all just seem to be containers with randomly generated loot. Then you've got the side missions, a lot of which are just about delivering an item to someone on the other side of the map for like a $50 reward. And I guess this all might be a bit of an issue, but it's kind of not. I think only because exploring the map and uncovering the world just never stops being engrossing. 
That whole immersive sim element to Weird West, I think is just where the whole thing really shines. And it's so rare to get a game like this, which gives you so much freedom in how you get around. I mean, you can go rooting around through cupboards, crates and containers, looting or stealing everything that's not nailed down. Come up against a locked door you haven't got the key to, well, if the door's not reinforced, you can just outright punch it down, or shoot it down. FBI, open up! If walking in through the front door of a building is too risky, well, then run around the back and leap onto a nearby veranda. If a jump is too high or too far, well, drop a barrel nearby and use it as a makeshift platform. Or just put barrels to offensive use, kicking TNT ones towards nearby enemies and then blowing them up with a well-placed shot. That never gets old, by the way. If you're taking the Sam Fisher approach to clearing out enemies and can't be bothered dragging every single body to an out-of-the-way corner, you can instead just outright cover the corpse in dirt with a shovel, hiding it entirely. You can even go grave robbing if you've got a shovel, or mining for ore if you've got a pickaxe. Then take that ore and improve and upgrade your weapons, or sell the stuff off for extra cash. Even all the useless junk you find can be sold for cash at the right vendors. And it just kind of feels like every single little mechanic and item somehow has a purpose. There's even a really cool dynamic fire system, like in Far Cry 2, where fire's gonna spread to nearby grass and trees and realistically burn until it can't burn no more. Food can even be cooked at a fire and eaten for a quick health boost. And how about this, if you try to light a campfire in the rain, it's gonna get quickly washed out. What is this shit? You can even apparently wipe out an entire town or through your actions, have it wiped out, making the whole thing abandoned. At which point, various hostile factions are gonna move in and take over. It's a whole lot different to games like Skyrim or Fallout, where key NPCs just get conveniently knocked out instead. It's just a fully believable game world with so many dynamic elements to how it operates, and I think it might even beat out things like Prey and Dishonored at their own game in some aspects. I also think that's one of the best parts to Weird West is the way that it really makes you live with the ramifications of your actions. Missions usually offer up violent and non-violent approaches, it just kind of depends on the people you talk to and whether or not that's the route you want to take. Certain characters might be harboring dark secrets or ulterior motives and you've got the option to dig into all that stuff. Then call them out on it or let it be, which then affects how they'll react to the player in the long run. Mayor's got secrets. Basement full of them. Sounds, sounds like might pay to dig deeper. I mean, at the end of the second journey, spoiler warning, after playing as the pig man, you're able to just outright choose whether or not the rest of these pig men live or die. Yeah, you get to choose the outcome for hundreds, if not thousands, of these miserable, unfortunate bastards who got turned into the kind of freaks that make the Frankenstein monster look like Christy Brinkley. And I'm talking 1980s Christy Brinkley, you know, National Lampoon's vacation Christy Brinkley. Anyway, then after that, you'll see the effects of that decision in the ensuing chapters. Now the rest of the pigmen have got their souls back. The question is, will y'all do right? It's a pig man! I couldn't help but let all these guys live because that's just the kind of player that I am. And from that point on, moving through the towns, I'd come across all these friendly pigmen. You know, just guys walking around and minding their own business. Aww. Let's get him a present. But then, going out into the world, I was also getting attacked by hostile pigmen, who've turned to a life of crime. Now these guys go around torrenting movies and TV shows, they bulk buy GPUs for Bitcoin mining, and they also watch anime. Do you know what I mean? Sick shit. In some way, although it is nice to see the good guys getting on with what remains of their lives, you also kind of feel responsible on some level for seeing what happens when they go bad. Completing side quests for people or simply saving them from dangerous situations also often makes them a friend for life too. This is a mechanic where after you've saved that person, they're then likely to show up at random during the middle of a fight to get you back. Kinda reminds me of that one scene in Billy Madison with Steve Buscemi. Man, I'm glad I called that guy. And I don't know how they happen to be so close and ready for action the entire time. I don't know, maybe they're stalking you. But it's still a bit of a welcome sight in the middle of a fight. That rhymed. To see these guardian angels show up and lend out a helping hand. After one journey is finished and you're on to the next character, you can even go back and link up with them. Enlisting them into your posse and then having them fight alongside you. That's actually a pretty big component to the game. Going around and building up this small gang. And creating a name for yourself across the weird west. Plus, it's also an incredible quality of life inclusion that these guys will still be holding on to all the fancy weapons and items that they had when you wrapped up their storyline. But good, 
bad, I'm the gal, guy, pig man, and werewolf with the gun. And when it comes to fucking shit up, Weird West lets you get it done. Now the weapon roster is a little bit limited here, though it does kind of feel like they've gone for that whole quality over quantity vibe. You've got a revolver, a rifle, shotgun, bow, and then melee weapons. Weapons come in different forms of rarity going off a 5 star rating system, but all that just seems to increase the base damage they do more than anything else. I mean you're not going to find a shotgun that shoots out fireballs or any of that kind of stuff, at least I didn't. I mean there's an ability that lets the revolver shoot out lightning, but it's not ingrained into the weapon itself. Savvy. I did find melee combat to be kind of crappy, and shotguns are also only useful at point blank range, which, you know, doesn't play into my wheelhouse of preferring to shoot someone from a long distance away. As a result, I spent the majority of my time here using the rifle and the revolver, and when the game gave me arrows for it, the bow. The reason for that is that the revolver and the rifle have the highest firing rate, and they're also pretty accurate at medium to long range. I don't know man, it just kind of seemed pointless to me to use anything else. It also feels like certain weapons are tailored for certain characters, like when I was playing as the Trapper, I had a bazillion arrows for the bow, and using this weapon I think definitely feels more in line with this guy's background, as opposed to playing as the Bounty Hunter or the Pigman, where I don't think I had a single arrow the entire time. Though you can kind of understand why they hold out on the bow for so long, because when you finally get this thing and you're sneaking around using it, it almost kind of feels like cheating. There is a basic cover system here too, where you can crouch behind waist high objects and peek out to take shots at enemies, but to me it feels more natural playing it like it was a first or a third person shooter, staying mobile and dodge rolling when need be. I'm still not 100% sold on the isometric viewpoint, the issue I think is that it can be kind of hard to tell when an NPC is actually in your line of sight during combat, or if they're behind something that's going to be blocking your shots. When you try to zoom in to see things a bit better, you lose a lot of your peripheral vision, and then you can't see threats approaching from other angles, but yet, when you zoom out, it's got a catch-22 of not having ideal visibility for whether shots are even going to connect. I definitely got more used to it the more that I played, but I can see this kind of thing really being a fly in the ointment, or a thistle in the dick hole to people who can't adapt to it. Although Weird West really offers the player the choice of either combat or stealth when dealing with enemies, the abilities really seem to lean towards the former approach. Stealth itself is pretty basic, you crouch walk around trying to stay out of someone's line of sight, pick up unconscious or dead bodies and dump them where people won't walk along and trip over them, and hide in bushes to avoid getting seen, you know, simple stuff. But only a handful of abilities work in tandem with this playstyle. I can't believe you've done this. Off the back of that, you've got the character abilities and the universal perks. Perks are things like increased reload speed, more health points, extra damage done to unaware enemies, and a bunch more that are carried across every single character's journey. And you unlock these by finding golden cards about the environment which you're constantly on the lookout for. As for the abilities, you've got ones for each weapon type, which you're gonna have to unlock each time for each character for each journey. And then to make it even more confusing, there's the unique abilities for each specific character. Got the gist? Got the gist. The Native American dude, for instance, can summon in a bear to fight alongside him, along with a tornado and fucking lightning bolts that go after nearby enemies. He's also got the most broken ability, I think, in the game, which muffles all of his footsteps, which makes stealth just ridiculously easy. Gotcha, bitch. The pig man, on the other hand, can make his skin bulletproof, deflecting bullets back at enemies, and also slam his hoof into the ground to stun anyone in its radius. Pigs have hoofs, right? Then, as you'd expect, the dude who's a werewolf has the ability to turn into a goddamn werewolf, running around for about 10 or so seconds and doing increased damage, which is kind of cool. Plus, he can also turn invisible and have a temporary ring of fire around him, not to be confused with the Johnny Cash song of the same name. But the ability I use the most here is actually the one that every character has access to, and that's what's more or less just Max Payne shoot dodge. While aiming, if you leap in any direction, the game goes into slow motion, but lets you continue to aim and shoot in real time. Yeah, sounds familiar. Like I said, aside from turning invisible or being able to run around at full tilt without making a sound, the vast majority of these are geared towards causing grievous bodily harm and complete disrespect to the person in question who happens to be on the receiving end. I mean, the bounty hunter can drop down an offensive mine, which detonates when it's walked over. 
How about an ability that makes the next shells fired from your shotgun explosive? Or fanning a revolver and emptying the chamber in a matter of seconds. Like, these aren't the kind of actions that lend themselves to subterfuge or even basic empathy. There's also a literal high noon ability, locking onto a bunch of enemies and emptying that revolver like your McCree from Overwatch. There's also one for the revolver that makes it so your bullets do electric damage, which I think you're supposed to be using when it's raining to amplify its damage output, and that almost feels like a goddamn war crime. The fact too that so often when you're under attack, you've got your buddies turning up to lend a helping hand, I think also shows that the game's really trying to push you into an offensive approach. Plus the fact you're also having to deal with a hostile NPC with a vendetta who's doxxed you and found your location. I just don't think talking someone down from a murderous rage is an option there. You know, unless you kind of let your gun do the talking. Yes. The main stealth mechanic I used is one that silences the next shot fired from your rifle, making it like a super high powered cannon that pretty much kills everything in a single hit. But again, like a pretty damn lethal strategy. Oh my god! So when it comes to stealth and a non-lethal approach, you're really just limited to running up behind someone and choking them out. I mean, that's about the only pacifist choice you have, apart from just avoiding them entirely, but I mean, where's the fun in that? And I mean, look, if you like methodically choking the breath out of dozens of enemies, and then carrying their bodies to conveniently out of the way hiding places, well then, you're gonna be in heaven here. Along with kleptomaniacs who need to obsessively search every single container for loot. At the end of the game, you're forced to deal with the ramifications of your body count regardless, so there is a sense of being held accountable if that's the route you take. But going non-lethal just kind of feels like it's missing out on the most fun aspect of the game. It'd be like buying a sports car and then just driving it around in first gear the entire time. Now, Weird West isn't a AAA game made by a team of like a couple of hundred people, and this means you're gonna see some shit here that you're probably not supposed to be seen. One of the weirdest things the game does, intentional or not, is how it completely changes the patrol routes and often locations of enemies pretty much every single time you reload a checkpoint. So say that an enemy's walking up like a set of stairs or something or loitering in a specific spot, well, you can load up a save file and now instead of them going up the stairs, they'll do a 180 and head off in an entirely new direction. Or in some cases, not even be in that area anymore. Even when they do find a spot to sit still in, they'll often just randomly get up and turn around for no apparent reason and without any kind of warning. Patrol routes also seem to be completely randomized, as in they're not patrolling a set path, they're just walking around at random, milling about here and there, and look, this is fine when it's like a single NPC, because it is more realistic that way. But when you've got like a half a dozen NPCs doing it at once in an area you're trying to remain undetected in, well, it kind of becomes a bit confusing. Call me crazy, man, but I always thought the point of stealth games was to learn the route that enemies take and then plan your method of attack. I think avoiding detection in a game like Metal Gear Solid is a perfect example of this. You'd hang back for a bit, watch where the enemy went, and then pick the perfect time to ambush them. Freeze. <gasps> for some reason though in Weird West, it's like they've completely done away with that, and not only completely randomized the movements that enemies often make, but like I said, also change it every single time you reload a save file. There also doesn't seem to be much consistency with the way that sound works. I've had times where I fired a shot off and then every single enemy knows where I am, and yet at other times where I gun someone down and then people in a nearby room don't even react. The most memorable moment I think was when I was just innocently bunny hopping around town, and I realized afterwards that I'd bunny hopped someone into a fucking coma accidentally, which caused everyone in the town to get super pissed off at me, you know, makes sense but at least this time I could identify what caused it. That's often a luxury you don't always have. I think Weird West is at its best when you just kind of go with the flow, and maybe on some weird level this has been done intentionally to stop people from just save scumming, which, you know, I guess makes sense. Either way though, when I just kind of embraced the madness and let whatever wanted to happen happen was when I really started to enjoy this thing the most. I try to sneak around as much as I could and take people down without being seen, for instance, but the moment that shit hit the fan, whether or not it was even my fault, well, from that point on, I just kept throwing more and more shit into those fan blades. And the fact you're given the capabilities to deal with what's trying to kill you is an added benefit. Because rarely, if you're seen, is it a game over. The game never kind of like forces you to stay hidden. And that's really, I think, the whole point of this game anyway, being able to do whatever you want to do. I mean, shit, man, at one point, I just felt like going through a town at night time and ripping everyone off. 
I could even climb in through their chimneys and sneak back out again and then sell all their stuff back to them the next day like a goddamn bandit. Impressive. Very nice. Add that into the mix where you also can get into fights with grizzly bears, werewolves, witches, and pigmen, and what you got is a pretty damn fun ride. Might pay to dig deeper. That Sunny Jim's is Weird West. Piss. 